So 50, he's in front of his grandmother's house and Supreme is around as well as two other guys. Yeah, they staked the place out. Yeah. Um, son and... God be. God, God be. So Son comes up to the car and opens fire. Right. Now, as it's happening, they say that 50 thought it was Hamo. Right. Hamo Darryl. was Mike Tyson's guy. Yeah, Daryl Baum. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was Tyson's bodyguard at one point, right? Yeah. Well. Bodyguard, friend, whatever. Yeah. Street, okay. Real, real, uh, real tough guy. But not a killer, you know, not a shooter. Okay. Why do you think 50 Cent thought it was Hamo? I think he, I think he said to the guy next to him, that looked like Hamo. Did, was that Hamo? That looked like Hamo. Was that Hamo or something like that? I think that's how that got out. Who was the guy that was in the car at 50? I forget his name. I went to go speak with him in a prison in upstate New York, and he wasn't no part of it, you know? Um, so... Yeah, that's, I got, you know, I've been actually looking through my old reports and I couldn't find it. Uh, but he was scared, you know, like he didn't want anything to do with it. And uh, so we never got anywhere that way. And for the, in the beginning of the investigation, I thought it was uh, Hamo, you know, I mean, 50 said, 50 said it was him and everything else. And then uh, when um, we started to get cooperators in the case, um, we found out differently. Well, yeah, like in 50s, uh, many men, he said, in the Bible it says what goes around comes around. Hamo shot me three weeks later, he got shot down. Now it's clear that I'm here for a real reason. Cause he got hit like I got hit, but he ain't fucking breathing. So in one of 50s big songs, he names Hamo as the shooter and talks about how three weeks later, Hamo gets killed. Right. So three weeks later, Hamo does get killed. Yeah, he gets killed by Damian Hardy and his crew. World. World, yeah. Okay. Why did Hamo get killed? Uh, when Damian Hardy was in prison, his brother Myron got killed by a kid named Peanut. Peanut was a part of a crew of guys uh, that were associated with uh, Daryl Baum. Uh, so you had like, uh, Peanut, uh, J.R. Hamilton, uh, who else was in that crew? I think, I think they were associated with Scooter and those guys even at one point, but, uh, they all kind of did stuff together and were tight. And so Damian Hardy was a psychopath. When he came out, he wanted everyone gone and anyone he thought was responsible for his brother's death or associated with them. Uh, he was, he was taking him out. So he was also, uh, let's see, who was his name? Darryl Baum's brother, T-Rock. I think his first name was Tyrone. He was extorting from guys in, who were, uh, doing at construction sites. He'd come and say, if you don't hire my guys, or if you don't kick back, you know, we're going to disrupt your business. And, uh, and he was killed also in that whole uh, little war that were lasted a very short amount of time, but uh, yeah, had nothing to do with fifty. Uh, the retaliation was a whole different set of uh, you know ghetto drama and craziness, and uh, guys like World were kind of similar to uh, Prince: senseless violence, no reason. You could settle it different ways. You have a strong crew. People are afraid of you. They're gonna they're gonna step back and let you do what you got to do. But he. I could see avenging your brother's death, but all the other stuff was just, you know, ridiculous. So. Okay, so 50 gets shot nine times by son. He survives. Yes. You know, he goes, uh, you know, he goes to hang out with Shamani XL, uh, who has a place way out, and they start working on music as he's healing up. Um, but Robert Lyons, AKA son, who's the shooter, mm -hmm. you said became Ja Rule's bodyguard. Yes. Did Ja Rule and them already know him or was it because of the shooting that they kind of brought him in? Yeah. So the, the weird thing about Rob Lyons is when I, when I first got his name, he didn't have an arrest record. 
He had a record with the FBI, but nothing that would come back on a rap sheet. I don't know if he got his case, you know, dismissed somehow or another. And they, at any rate, he was a mystery to us. And the only thing I could find was his driver's license. And he didn't look anything like homicide. So I didn't know what to make of it initially. Uh, but he was driving around in a Hummer. He lived in the pink houses in Brooklyn. Later on, he was driving around in a Mercedes Benz. I took the tag off the Benz, and who it comes back to Jeffrey Atkins, Ja Rule, um, and then any kind of surveillance that we conducted, he's right behind Ja Rule. He's his de facto bodyguard, no doubt. Um, but he seems to be a guy who's got Brooklyn ties. He had ties to Scooter. He had ties to World. Um, and he seemed to have been hustling, but nobody really know, knew him. You know, it was like one of those guys who laid really low and and, and uh, didn't have a real street uh, name, street cred. So, um, but yeah, he, uh, he, he went from nobody to killer to bodyguard in, in uh, quick fashion. Okay, but he didn't actually kill 50. Well, shooter, I should say. Yeah. I'm sorry. Whatever happened to Son, is he still alive? Last I heard, he was out here somewhere. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, those guys had a they had a good ride, but uh, you know, the that Irv Gotti destroyed that company. You know, and he was a talented guy. He was riding high, and uh, you know, you how how culpable he is in the shooting of Fifty Cent. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what people think, uh, but it's funny that the the shooter that McGriff takes to to get fifty is promoted to Ja Rule's bodyguard. Well, fifty gets shot, but he doesn't cooperate. No, I chased after him forever, okay. and I couldn't get him to cooperate. I went through lawyers. I went through Jimmy Iovine. I went through his uh, his legitimate police bodyguards. Everybody, I went. I knew his attorney, Bob Kalina, and uh, Bob set up. Uh, you know, th- I could I could talk to Fifty, and basically he said no, no dice. Hmm. You know, he goes, "Thank you, but no, uh, not my thing." I recently uh, interviewed Tony Yayo, and we were talking about the whole snitching thing. He said some pretty gruesome stuff. He said that he knew of people in his neighborhood who snitched and they would get tied up. They would put peanut butter all over their legs and let the rats just basically start chewing on their legs. Other snitches, they would actually make shit sandwiches and force them to eat the actual shit sandwich. Have you ever heard of stories like this? No. Were snitches getting killed during this time? Is what? Were snitches actually getting killed though during this time? You know, you used to hear guys get marked, you know, slashed in the face, different things like that. Um, I don't know many guys that lost an informant uh, to be in a snitch. It seems to be something that was like in a lot of movies in the 80s, you know, <laughs> police movies, the snitch gets killed. But I, don't, I never knew it happened to anybody. I, uh, and most snitches are, they're not supposed to be, but they're actively involved in criminal behavior and activity. So uh, that's usually how they end up going, if not go to jail. 